Knife Shop, Rob from Woody Summercraft here. Today I've got a piece of hackberry that was given to me from a friend quite a while ago um, and I didn't know what to expect but I'd seen some hackberry years ago that had some spalting on it and it looked pretty amazing. I didn't expect to find that in this piece because it's been sat in my carport probably for about three years now. Um, I don't know what the moisture content is but we'll take a look at that at some point. I've just cut it on the bandsaw and it is indeed spalted on the inside so check this out. So as I said I've already had it to the bandsaw and cut it into the circle that I need for the bowl and lo and behold inside it is spalted. So we're gonna see what it's like. Uh, there is a couple of cracks in here so maybe we'll turn them away I hope if not we'll just put them some CA in there that's all uh, but possibly they'll get turned away so I'm gonna get this mounted on a faceplate onto the lathe and then we'll start turning this into a new bowl okay so with my moisture meter if it still works we'll see what the moisture content is looks to be about 13 percent there yeah, it's about 13%. Now this was a freshly cut edge, so I'm assuming it's gonna be about 13 to 14% all the way through, which is on the cusp of potentially still warping. Um, I'd rather it be about 8% or zero would be ideal, but uh, we'll see what we come up with. Um, I'll bring you in so you can see these cracks too because I think there's a good chance they'll get turned away. So this piece of wood wasn't sealed at all, it was just put in my carport and it sat there. I didn't paint the ends, seal it or anything. I did however cut the blank in half right away um, and I removed the pith. Uh, but as you can see there is a crack here and a crack here but they don't go all the way to the center or you know to where the pith would have been but I'm hoping that this will get turned away. So the nice thing about having a variable speed, it gives you the chance to start slow and then gradually bring the speed up to where, where you can turn it. Safely, that's about 750 RPM. I'd be quite happy at that speed to initially uh, start turning it. I'm going to initially start nibbling away at this corner here and then get this rounded and trued up. So turning at this speed it's not going to be a smooth cut although it's not terrible but there is tear out because of the slow speed uh, but I have to go slow initially because it'll be uh, uneven it'll be out, out of balance but I gotta move the tool rest in so my tool isn't overhanging the tool rest too much see if I can increase the speed any from 750 not yet I hope that I can retain some of this spalting. It looks pretty, pretty nice. I've increased it a little bit to 800. Just before the wobble. got these flat spots that we need to address so there's still quite a bit of material that we're going to have to get rid of to get this perfectly trued up before we can really increase the speed much still got a little bit of a flat spot there looks like it's going to make a nice salad bowl so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a tenon on the bottom um, and then 
remove that after after we complete. That's a nice piece of wood. I'm going to start working on my tenon and then get this shape that I want. Okay, so we're going to go with a two and a half inch tenon. And again, I mark the center to remove this uh, using my jam chuck that I, uh, I use pretty much on all the bowls that are not live edge. So I think for the shape for this, I'm, I like the calabash bowls, which basically disappear into the table and they have a slightly rounded top. So it, they're slightly hollowed under the lip. When you get close to the shape that you want, you can try shear scraping. Every wood's gonna take it differently. The punkier the wood, the worse it's gonna be. The harder the wood, the better cut you'll get with a scrape. Let's just see how that takes to scraping. Not the best on the end grain, but it's not terrible. Sanding will take care of it. It's not the best though. So definitely ride the bevel is the way to go. So let's just do that again with riding the bevel. That is a much cleaner cut, still a little bit of tear out, but the end grain is uh, always going to give you some problems. But I like that profile. I just need to continue this around the lip and then bring it in just a little bit. I'm going to move the tool rest. This is the shape I'm going to go with, still quite a few tool marks here, so I'm going to shear scrape this. Uh, so I'm going to drop the back of the handle and bring the cutting edge up and shear scrape this. Okay, so I've sanded this uh, 80 and 100, that got rid of any tool marks and any little scratches that were in the surface. So I'll just be applying some um, regular mineral oil onto the bowl with a paper towel. The cheap stuff is just for sanding purposes, so uh, it's not really a part of your finish. And you're going to remove it anyway with uh, denatured alcohol after you've sanded. Okay, so now I'm going to sand with 100 grit and there won't be as much dust this time because it's uh, wet. Now I'm going in reverse right now which is pushing the dust away from me which would go down the dust extractor if it was running. It's good to sand in both directions, so I'll put it in forward. Okay, so this has been sanded to 320 grit. What I'm going to do now is clean it with some denatured alcohol. That's going to pull the oil back out of the wood. Now I do this with um, oily woods like olive. Um, or uh, through your burl, which is a very oily wood as well. The naturally occurring oils, the uh, denatured alcohol, will pull the oil out of that so that you can get a finish on it, because some woods are hard to finish. I think we're just about there. Then we can put some sanding sealer on it. Not much left in this can.
you can do this either standing still or running on the spot. I mean the wood's turning. Alright, so I've put quite a bit in there into the open pores, especially the end grain, concentrating on the end grain trying to get those pores filled. So what I'll do now is you want it to be dry before you move on to Yorkshire grit or anything else. So uh, you can either do that with friction, creating friction with the with the paper towel. That will keep it. That will make it dry. But you do want to denib it with a scouring pad because on the larger items, any sort of streaking that the shellac-based sanding sealer will do is going to be very noticeable. So that's why you want to denib, especially on bowls and larger items. You'll get shiny and dull spots otherwise. So that is now dry. I see the shiny and dull spots, so I'm going to take a scouring pad and just denib that. Basically remove the shiny spots. Make it an even look prior to Yorkshire grit. Still in reverse. I can put it in forward now. So I've denibbed it in reverse and forward. So when we get a finish on it, it'll be nice and smooth. Any little tiny fibers that are sticking up, you're going to fill them. Yorkshire grit is going to do your fine aggressive sanding now. From 320, it's going to bring it down to 1000 grit. And then with the microfine, we'll get an even higher finish. And then that'll be before Hampshire Sheen glass and Hampshire Sheen microcrystalline wax. That's a pretty beautiful piece of wood though. Okay, so like I said, this is sanded to 320. Now we're gonna use Yorkshire grit. And we'll just wipe a thin layer over the whole bowl. Is there anybody that hasn't heard of Yorkshire Grit? If not, comment below that you've not heard of Yorkshire Grit. Very popular in the wood turning world. Glenn Senior, you're a genius mate. So this is going to cover the whole piece really, not too much, just enough to coat, coat the whole piece and then we're going to bring the speed down low and put the lid on this and then in slow speed we'll just work we'll work that grit in and you'll hear it cutting the grain like liquid sandpaper and then the wood will get shinier and shinier gradually increase the speed using the same paper towel that I applied it with. And also, I don't know if you noticed, but those cracks that we talked about initially did indeed turn away. So we don't have to worry about filling the cracks because they are gone. Assuming our 13% moisture content doesn't give us a problem down the road. I'm going to bring the speed up now. I'm not too worried about the foot because we're going to re we're going to finish the foot at the very end. It'll be the last thing we do. Onto a clean piece of paper towel. And then another piece of paper towel. Be very conscious of where your tool rest is at this point. You don't want to get your hand caught between the tool rest and the spinning wood. So I always push it to one side. So yeah, it still wants to wobble over 900 RPM. 
I can get up to about 900 RPM but it wants to wobble. So the moisture content within the wood is uh, uneven throughout the piece of wood. So you want to keep doing this until nothing else comes off on the paper towel. Normally I would go a little bit faster but I can't. That's okay. We're just about there. Okay, that's enough. So now we're going to go on to the microfine, which is the white stuff. It's going to bring it up to an even finer grit. So we'll bring the speed down again and then wipe a small amount all over. Okay, again in slow speed, start work that in. We always start in slow speed, otherwise it will just throw the uh, Yorkshire grit back at you. Keeping the paper towel moving. And increasing the speed. Okay, at this point I'll use a fresh piece of paper towel. The Yorkshire grit has done its job. Again, we're going to remove all the residue because uh, Yorkshire grit is a beeswax based product which will go soft and melt in your hand, just like an M&M. Whereas the Hampshire Sheen is a hard finish, so it's a durable finish. This is a prequel to the finish. It's the sanding preparation for your finish. Just about there. And let's take a look at that. Looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that so far. We'll get on to the uh, Hampshire Sheen high gloss now. So this is the Food and Toy Safe Hampshire Sheen high gloss. And we'll put a small amount over the whole piece with the lathe standing still. I can already feel that getting tacky as it's drying. I'll just leave that for a few minutes. Okay, so that has been on there for a few minutes now. It has gone dry and tacky. Uh, again, with the tool rest, make sure this is out of the way. Um, I'm going to use the same paper towel. There's still a bit of wax on there and buff it in. And again, you want friction and heat to build up with this to burnish that wax into the wood. So you want a bit of speed with this. I can only go up to about 900 right now because the thing wobbles at about 950. Bring it up to 900. You can see the reflection of my fingers now in the surface of the bowl. Make sure not to touch the your fingernail to the bowl because that will scratch it. Feeling a little bit of heat with the friction. And now onto a fresh piece of paper towel. Making sure there's no residue that comes off on the paper towel before I move on to the next step. I'm going to use the Food and Toy Safe microcrystalline wax. So a small amount over the whole piece. Nice thin layer over the entire piece. And then let that dry. And that's pretty well dry straight away. So we're going to buff that in now. Move on to a fresh towel making sure there's no residue because if you leave residue on there it will just go tacky 
and dull. You have to burnish it right in. So we don't want to see anything coming off on the towel. Almost there. Just a little bit coming off still. Not much. Well, I certainly didn't want that tenon any smaller. Any smaller and it wouldn't have fit in these jaws. So I've got the tail stuck up for additional support while I chew up the whole front of the bowl before I start following. got it turned down to about uh, three eighths of an inch thick which is uh, utilitarian so it's not too fragile that it will break so we can actually use it for putting uh, food in or something um, once it's sealed it'll be perfectly fine so what I'm going to do now is uh, give it a good sanding from probably I'll start at 80 grit because it is open grain so there's a little bit of tear out on the end grain but it's not too bad and I'll work my way up to 320 grit and then I'll go through the same process finishing and we'll bring you along for the ride at that point. I've sanded through the grits starting at 100 working my way down to uh, 320 grit on the inside now and I've cleaned it with the NH alcohol and sealed it. I did use the oil as well while I was um, sanding the finer grits just to reduce the amount of um, dust in the air. So now I've put the sanding sealer on and I'm just kind of burnishing that in. That will dry it, make sure that it dries and take off a little bit of excess if there's any excess there. And it will help seal the pores as well by burnishing it in. And then once we are satisfied that it's dry, what we can do is take the scouring pad again and just denib it. Basically just to take the shiny spots off because you'll get shiny and dull spots like I said before and it will just even it out. A nice even finish. You could do this with a 320 grit sandpaper as well. The last grit that we used just takes it all down to the same kind of sheen right now. So it's a, the same dull sheen. So now what we're going to do is take the Yorkshire grit and we'll apply some of that over the entire bowl same process as before that's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with that um, the Yorkshire Grit original has done its job you can do you can do that twice if you really want to just like anything else right more is better but you don't have to put more product on it you only have to do a little bit a thin layer over the whole piece like this this is the uh, microfine now alright so what we'll do is we'll get the Hampshire Sheen Gloss Love the stuff. Get my Hampshire Sheen can opener. We got it all. I tell you. Leave no stone unturned. And we'll just put a small amount in there. Just coat the whole piece inside. That's looking splendid. Very happy with the way that looks. Hampshire Sheen Micro Crystalline Wax. thin layer of the whole piece. It's going to make it water resistant and uh, fingerprint proof. And now we'll just buff that in now that it's gone tacky. That is the bowl done. What I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to put one more coat of my crystalline over the whole piece and then we'll get it turned around and remove the foot. And we'll bring the bowl up Approximate center. Bring the tail stuck up. Nice thing about this particular lathe, it's got about four and a half inches of, of uh, travel in the tail stock. So we'll bring the speed down low, lock that tail stock, 
and with the speed down low you can see now that's pretty close to perfect you'd have a hard time getting it any closer to the center than that if you don't have it perfectly centered you will have issues um, making the bottom of your bottom okay so this is where I have to be really really careful because um, this tip here could break and the bowl could potentially go flying so I'm gonna nibble just a little bit more and hopefully not too much we'll see this little nib here I can just take off with a chisel and then I'll hand sand it and then I'll be able to put my stamp in the middle which I haven't used yet okay so at this point you don't want to drop the bowl you want to make sure you've got a firm grip on it move the tail stock out of the way and then there it is so we can put it on the bedways take a chisel and remove that little nib and there it is removed that easy it's that easy guys so now I just got a tiny little bit of tiny little bit of sanding to do there and that is my new logo now put on the bottom of this bowl a little uh, WS for Woodsley Summercraft quite happy with that I'll just put a little bit of sanding sealer on on the underside and then a little bit of wax just to finish it off so it looks kind of the same as the rest of the bowl I could have put some lines or some detail on the underside but uh, I think that's enough right there quite happy with that and thanks for joining me in my shop today there is a nine and a half inch by four and a half inch um, spalted hackberry bowl hope you enjoyed the process uh, don't forget to join me in my shop the next time and uh, please like and subscribe I appreciate it you take care now